My father used to work in the as a geologist and he his company sent him to Canada and we lived nine years in Canada when I was a small boy and then we went back to France and when I was around 20 years old because I was young I wanted to travel so I said okay let's go to Quebec and I went to Quebec and then I stayed in Quebec many years When you go to some other country, it's not only about the language. I would say the language to communicate with per with people is maybe 30%. And all the rest, the communication, the way you make friends, the way you interact with people, uh, the way you work, uh, is, is so different. I would need to learn all this again. So now I, I'm not uh, like uh, 18 years old. Uh, it, it would be to redo my life. How long did it say? Isabel, uh, have to, you have to read the instructions. Come. Because you're the chef. You're telling me what to do. I'm just your assistant. Uh, bacon so. tail top cuts in center of... Okay, 10 minutes in pan, remove from pan, mm -hmm. cool, completely before frosting the bowl. I don't see myself as a, as a French person. I, I see myself as a, a French-speaking Canadian. And I lived most of my life in Quebec, although my parents are French from France. But my culture is Canadian, that's for sure. Okay, share, okay, girls? Good morning. After we got married, she said, Pierre, you know, uh, in Chongqing, uh, usually it's the man who do the cooking. But I told her in France, unfortunately, it's the woman who do the cooking. Because she's such a good cook, so I don't want to take that away from her. <laughs> Mostly is um, Chinese style. And uh, we cook uh, every day, almost uh, every day is Chinese food. And uh, sometimes, of course, it's uh, French food because my husband uh, is French. Uh, my mother like to say, um, so that you are like the grass and you just put you everywhere and have a little water, have a little sunshine and you can grow. Before when the, um, we were in China, but we, we are we come back to Canada already five years, we, six years we didn't go back to China. Since the kids go to school, we didn't go back. Before we travel, travel, always travel. Now I have two girls, so it's a big decision. And also my husband, no. he, uh, he didn't visit his family and friends maybe uh, more than 80 years. Just uh, they, they like China and they you know they, they know many things about there and but uh, they are a little shy to speak Chinese. <laughs> and uh, before uh, before we arrive in Winnipeg, and we ask them from Monday to Friday just to watch Chinese film, no other English or French, so they can. They listen and they can understand uh, 90 percent. But just for speak, uh, we didn't speak Chinese uh, often at home. That's where I <laughs> regret a little bit because I didn't uh, force them. Oh, the cake! Oh, the <laughs> color is good. It is very easy. In to have a, like a communication with Chinese friends. So I, I, I feel comfortable in that culture. I feel that 
that the Chinese culture that she she has in herself in her life brings a plus a, a, a plus in my life. So uh, it's not only about food; it's much more than that. And uh, I enjoy her friends. It's not like she's a stranger for me. No, on the contrary, I feel close to her, and I'm close to the Chinese culture. Father in heaven, we are so happy to be uh, together as friends here and to share this meal in celebration of Easter. And we ask that you bless this food, but above all, Father, we ask that you bless each one of us and all the people of our families and friends. Amen. Amen. Enjoy the food. We met online. Um, we start to chat. 2002, 2002. July. Because we're going to go to we're Samitar, going to Samitar together. Mom said there's many books. We're going to check the books. I was doing a postdoctoral uh, study in uh, business school. So you can check. Uh, and my teacher used to go to China to teach during the summer. As a professor. Uh, as professor at, uh, at business school. And he said, Pierre, you know, China is really growing. It's really expanding, it's interesting, you should go there. And since I had a contact there, I, uh, I said to him, yeah. Well, the guy. <laughs> I, know, I don't speak Chinese, you have to help me. And, uh, and then uh, so I, I flew to Chongqing. Well, I remember it was warm. That's the first feeling. Without, before I met uh, Luli, because it's, a summer. Uh, it's summer. So I said, wow, this is warm. I was checking, you know, China is really new, it's very different. And um, I, I, it was a bit like um, you go in the pool, you have to go in the water and you have to swim. So you don't know what to expect. So I, I just came out on the plane, I took my luggage, and there she was. And uh, she was all smiling. And at that time, uh, Luli, she's, her English is not good as today. It was. A few words here, yeah, a few words yeah. there. <laughs> Sometimes we use the uh, translator. Translator. But we went in the in her car. She had a French car, and she put some gloves on. <laughs> <laughs> we never do that here, or in France, or in, uh, but in China people do that, you know. So she put her glove. I, I said, oh, that's kind of awkward, and she started to drive the car with her. Because when um, because in Chongqing is so hot, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. summer is sometimes forty degree, and uh, we sweat. Mm -hmm. So, so we have the habit to put this. So that so day she didn't sweat because of the warm. She sweat because she met me. So she <laughs> put her gloves on. Maybe. <laughs> I'm just waiting, and uh, suddenly I saw oh, it's like some foreigner uh, come out. <laughs> but because yeah, before, because Chongqing. There's no foreigner. It's, it's seldom uh, at that time. It's not like yeah. it's not like Shanghai or Beijing. Yeah, not many. So I was really swimming into the Chinese culture. I was really. It's not a tourist. It was just coming and meeting her, and then she, that day she brought me to the restaurant. So what happened is that it's a small restaurant in the small streets of Chongqing. There's no tourists there, <laughs> and I go inside. We go inside, and maybe there was six or seven tables maximum not small not big yes. people they stopped eating and they all stare at stare me. at him like the, like the first time <laughs> they see a, a white guy you know and uh, so okay so we had a seat order something and then i start to use some chopsticks because sometimes here we use chopsticks in the restaurant you know we go to an asian restaurant oh it, it looked like if when i use the chopsticks people start to speak again it was really like, yeah. okay, he's not that strange. Yeah. Because Maybe some people, they just some Chinese women just uh, think about the, the foreigner, like in the film. Oh, they have a big house, the super car, yeah. and they look there in the beach and they relax, you That's don't one work. Thing. <laughs> That's one thing I, I, I saw, you know, like in like the, the perception of, of who Americans or Canadians are. Uh, like like people here don't understand some of the cult, uh, Chinese culture and in China because people see films you know from Hollywood and uh, they in, in the films it's not real life 
they always show nice cars, uh, a handsome man, beautiful woman, happy family, um, big house, and people think, oh, that's nice life, which is not the life <laughs> of, of 98 or 99 percent of the people. As uh, people here, you know, maybe they have a house, but in fact, the house, how did they get it? They have a, they have to, to take a loan from the bank and they have pressure because they have to work hard to, to, to repay the loan. So they're not rich. They don't even own the house. It's the bank who owns the house. So that's, uh, that's one thing is uh, quite okay. different. There was, there's many thoughts about China in, in, in Canada or the United States. It's starting to change, but people have really misunderstand um, the culture of China. Many think, oh, China is like uh, in the old days, you know, people would, uh, has these houses with, with pointy uh, uh, roofs, and they, they see it like China 100 years ago. But most people who haven't traveled to China uh, don't have the right idea, and of the culture, and of politics. It's really once you get inside and you start to speak to people that you get a notion of of what is China and uh, how much is is growing, changing so fast. And on the other side, I found also that some Chinese people, like when we went to, to her um, to her office the first time, and we had lunch with uh, her colleagues, and I always remember that question is that one guy, you know, they're, these, these people are educated. They're doctors or close to being yeah, most, doctors. Yeah, most of these doctors. Yeah. And he looks at me and he says, uh, Pierre, well, she was translating, and he said, do you think the United States will attack China? <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> There's... I never think about it. I were married, uh, the guy from other country. At that time, I was um, I was a sales manager in the pharmaceutical company. It's quite a good, quite um, yeah. It's it's very good. It's like when we met and I saw how successful she was and how much money she had. I fell I fell in love. <laughs> oh no! Uh, I think for me, you know, we were. We weren't like teenagers or yeah or twenty years old. Yeah. Uh, so we're... it was it was uh, as we knew each other. You know, we, I start to speak to her. I start to to know her better, and so it's not like love at first sight, but it's a true love. I feel he's very different from from the people I meet like before in my past. They work hard, they just uh, want to get more money and they want to the children go to the, the, the famous school or some family, they, they spend the, maybe whole money to send the kids to United States or Canada to study. I don't think it's, it's worse to do that. That's, uh, that's one thing that we, we see in China and, and we see in Canada as well. Uh, countries where some people, not everyone of course, but some, tend to just pursue money. And some values that Chinese people have, like family, uh, friendship, and now some people are getting very rich and they say, oh, I don't have, so they feel frustrated. See, how come I'm not rich? These people are rich, and there's some corruption. So, China is a great country, and, and it's, it's going to be uh, a leader, maybe the first country, the first and most powerful country in the world. And hopefully, I believe that there needs to be also understand how much spiritual life is important. Um, because once you have money, you have money, but maybe you feel very empty. I 
started to know something very different from my life, and which is the start when he brought me to the church. And I just told her, just stay there and we'll kneel down. Just close your eyes. I start to pray, and I always feel like Jesus is just beside me. That was a moment, uh, a changing moment for her life, where she received faith. So there's another dimension to life, which makes us happy, a happy day. He's an angel. God sent him to come to risk me. First year you arrived there, cough, cough. Is the pollution? Because we're so used to have some, yeah. some pure uh, environment here. The air is so pure. Yeah. So as you go to some other country, where you're not used to it. Well, you, you know, it's difficult to, to take it. You know, Chinese government, if they want, they can control very well. They can do very good job, like an Olympic yeah. in Beijing. If yeah. they want to control, at that time is good. But after what happened, so after the Olympics, after things came Olympic, back to being back. polluted again. But it, it, it could be a challenge because, of course, China is growing a lot. Uh, more and more cars, more and more companies yeah. and industry. Uh, so it would take a, a very strong political will. If it, this happened here, and then one, one party would say, I'm going to clean up the environment, people will vote for that party, and things are going to change. But in China right now, the system is that, that there's no, no other people who can contest what the government is doing. It would be the interest of China to do something about the environment, because some people are leaving China just for that reason. So, so China wanting to keep their good people, awesome people in China, well, they should do something for the environment. Yeah, and also uh, for me, in my opinion, I, I will not send my kids back to China <laughs> to study there. That's horrible. When I first time I arrived in Montreal, and uh, his friend, your, your friend uh, Robert, Robert asked yeah. ask me, said, Mary, um, now in China, it's um, <laughs> still like people dress like the you no know, black yeah. and like all the, the same, uh, all the same, all yeah, the same, like a, like a, uh, I don't know, maybe they just saw many years ago, so they still. In their mind, it's yeah. like um, still it. all the color, same color, like uh, maybe like uh, 1967 or yeah, something. When there like was that. That, that regulation, that rule that the people yes. would yeah, all dress like the same. Yeah, all the dress the same. He really asked me that question. Mm -hmm. I said, mm -hmm. no, it's in China. <laughs> everywhere, the fashion, the, everywhere. Okay, I'll be with you. Okay. She never went to Europe, never went to North America. So it was a big jump. It was a big jump. I think uh, she discovered what Canada really is compared to what people think it is. She, she believed um, what Canadians would say. She, because we, when you arrived, we went to some uh, store and uh, it was a hairdresser. And, uh, you know, the person, the salesperson said, she shut out some shampoo and some conditioner. And the salesperson said, uh, you know, you just need one drop. Just one drop. Uh, I think you believed her. Yeah, I, I, you believed her. I said, uh, because I said, here yeah. people, they should, they should be more honest. <laughs> <laughs> yes. His friends, they're more French way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they meet, like the friends meet the first time, they give the kiss on the cheek. Oh, I feel like, uh, 
uncomfortable, oh, okay. very <laughs> uncomfortable. <laughs> and I remember first time Robert gave me the kiss because it's a man. Because in China, if the man not give you kiss, even in the straight, if like a, you need to give you hug, it's not normal. Or, or only your boyfriend or your husband. So I, I feel really very uncomfortable. <laughs> but I saw they do this, so uh, I, I, I think I have to adapt. So little by little. So she started to kiss men on the street. <laughs> At the beginning, it's really like, uh, like suddenly, like I have nothing to do. <laughs> the businesswoman from the business schedule suddenly to change it to be like a everything, uh, yeah, nothing just a big, sitting big there. Change, really so sometimes at the beginning, um, I don't think oh I should tell him everything. I make decision. I think I today I do something. I do. But after, I feel, you know, just um, especially for the three years, sometimes I argue with him, uh, make him unhappy. I have to change because um, I cannot wait him change, adapt me. I have to change to adapt him also. So after little by little, and I know, um, we are now we are a couple and I'm not businesswoman anymore. I'm just a wife. So I have to listen to him um, for um, like if we want to make some decision or I want to get some advice from him. I know I change a lot. This is, is this is true. Well I don't like chocolate For us we are we are equal and we respect each other and uh, I don't, like before, I don't work and uh, I don't make money and but uh, he always uh, respect me but in China I don't think sometimes maybe uh, oh if you don't make money or uh, probably uh, you're in the family you, you're always controlled by someone yeah that's that's a big difference, and also especially for the like uh, family work, the housework, or uh, we always share. Like uh, he's uh, he has time, he he do, and uh, I have time. I do. In general life, I didn't feel something or oh, difficult, and the, because I remember arrive, he he already he know he prepared this. The, the, the super cold winter cold and the hot for me I never I never use the hot in, in my city even glove glove just for the decoration is like so everything he prepared well one friend he went out even he didn't have the glove gloves and the, the winter hot after his, his his, his hands, the fingers are really damaged. If some new immigration <laughs> arrive here, if they can get advice from other people, especially the local people, it's really better for their life. Gail. That's the conference where you've been. Uh, going barefoot. Okay. You know, I'm sure there's a cost if you're going to come out. Because, you know, we're going to dinner together. So, she said, yes. It was probably, but I'm going to specify how I'm going to have my client. I'm going to propose something for that day. It's going to be a good day. It's going to be a When we arrived here for the job interview, for this job, it was spring. It was very nice. The whole family came, we visited, uh, checked the schools, and then we moved in August, and the winter was the worst winter in 36 years. So we had temperatures below 40, even around minus 50, 
and we said, what have we done to come to Winnipeg? It was so cold, really, really cold. But um, it was, no, we're very happy. We're very happy. People are friendly, it's true. You know, in the license plates, it says, friendly Manitoba, which is, which is true. People are very nice. And we found a nice house and we made friends. And the job is good. I'm happy here, so yeah, it's good. I think it's last year and uh, my kids said, oh, now we are bigger, mom, you can, you have time, you can look for the job. We talk about this with the, which field I should uh, focus. So I just think about, uh, first I have the back, background and for the medical field. And also, um, I don't think I have a lot of Chinese doctors. So, so I'm thinking if I can learn this part, probably for the future, it can help the Chinese community and mm -hmm. also for the newcomer, especially. I went through all the process until I had the course. One course is, is a transcription. Uh, everything and even the punctuation, and we cannot make the errors. At the beginning, I didn't think about this. It's so difficult. <laughs> And the first test uh, uh, for the for the audio, and um, so I didn't pass. That's in my whole life. I it's the first time I failed in my test. I uh, just uh, practiced the final um, exam. I passed, and I got a good mark. This is a very difficult time for me in, in Canada. It's not other things else like the life and also like the first year we arrived in Winnipeg, the horrible winter. And uh, like before leaving with Quebec, even I don't speak French, but uh, it's okay. I, I, uh, I didn't feel like something so difficult. Now, um, it's impossible to study for the doctor also. <laughs> like, like I study in China, because now I'm not young. Um, I don't know, maybe for the future, and if I um, have time, I, if my husband encourages me, my girls, my daughters need to be okay, why not? I still can have it.